Well, uh, first of all, I would like to, to thank you uh, for your kind uh, invitation and for giving me the opportunity to speak before you and before this uh, uh, distinguished uh, audience. So I will try to, uh, to uh, uh, be as short as possible. I will, I will try to stick with my 15 minutes uh, of uh, uh, speech. So the topic of my presentation is uh, the role of international uh, human rights law in advancing women's rights. We'll try to assess, thank you, the, the progress in respect of women's rights up to date, while emphasizing at the same time on the need for more synergy and cooperation and legislation, especially in relation to two areas, the elimination of all forms of violence against women and the right to education and women's empowerment in all spheres of life. So what is the, the state of play of uh, women's rights uh, today? For the last three decades, women's rights have been promoted by numerous uh, commitments undertaken by states at national, regional, and global uh, level to promote gender equality and advance women's rights, improving the status of women worldwide. Uh, today, women's rights in international law emerges as an exciting and rapidly developing subfield of international human rights protection. There exists a sound international legal framework for the, de for the defense of women's rights. However, political action must be geared to achieving the effective implementation of the existing legal instruments and standards. Treaties are the international equivalent of legislation broadly stated as the basic norm creating text. The major multilateral uh, treaties, international treaties, may occupy any one of a number of places in a hierarchy of legal authorities depending on the domestic law of the member states. A treaty may be on, the, on a part with domestic constitutional law, above it or somewhere in between domestic constitutional law and domestic statute, statutory law, or lack validity in that last case, and enabling or implementing law of the jurisdiction must expressly declare a treaty to be a law of that country. So these variations are true for member states of the UN and of the Council of Europe parent bodies of the most widely known human rights treaties. So we should reflect and we should go further in our reflection about it to avoid any legal vacuum in respect of treaties placed in the hierarchy of legal norms. Women protection in the UN uh, framework at the universal uh, level. Since 1975, the UN has held a series of world conferences on women's issues, starting with the World Conference on International Women's Year in Mexico City, Mexico. These conferences created an international forum for, for women's rights, but also illustrated divisions between women of different cultures and the difficulties of attempting to apply principles universally. A major step forward in the promotion and protection of international women's rights was definitely the drafting and ratification of the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the CEDAW, uh, that was signed uh, in December 1979 and that entered into force on the 3rd of September 1981. The General Assembly adopted, of the United Nations adopted the optional protocol in October 1999. It opened for t signatures in uh, December of the same year and entered into force in December 2002, creating an enforcement mechanism similar to that already in place for the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. The CEDAW Convention is the most comprehensive international human rights instrument uh, addressing discrimination against women to date. Since its adoption, it has been considered as a reference text in the area of women's rights. It is the first binding instrument, legally binding instrument, 
which defines discrimination against women and ask states to make a commitment to eliminate it. Uh, approximately 100 states have signed it and uh, over 190 member states of the United Nations have ratified the convention. Despite these international commitments, some contradictions persist between uh, national legislation and the provisions of the convention, as well as other relevant human rights instruments. For example, contrary to the letter and the spirit of the CEDAW Convention and the Convention on the Rights of the Child, several European countries allow marriage under the age of 18, whereas the statutory age of marriage should be at least 18, so as to comply with CEDO and with the Convention of the Rights of the Child. An additional matter of concern is that many, too many UN member states have made reservations to one or more substantive articles of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. As part of the possible uh, solutions, I would say that further impulse in relaunching political will and action is needed today also in relation to uh, the CEDO Convention. Priority objectives should be limiting or withdrawing existing reservations which contravene the letter and the spirit of the Convention repel or revise national legislation which is contrary to the Convention, ratify the Convention's optional protocol, and reinforce the Convention control mechanism to ensure effective control on national implementation. Other uh, treaties uh, concerned with other aspects of women's rights have been sponsored by the United Nations organization. This includes, for instance, the Convention on the Political Rights of Women, uh, 1953, so uh, 60 years ago. The Convention on the Nationality of Married Women, the Convention of, on Consent to Marriage, the Minimum Age for Marriage, etc., etc. Besides this, I cannot but mention the institution of a special rapporteur on violence against women, established in uh, uh, March 1994, in application of Resolution 1994-45, on the question of integrating the rights of women into the human rights mechanisms of the United Nations. Other international uh, intergovernmental organizations, and I am, I am referring here in particular to the specialized agencies of the United Nations are concerned by uh, the protection of women. ILO, International Labour Organization Standards for Employment of Women in particular, are important and are embodied in recommendations and instruments to which many countries are parties. And most of the Council of Europe uh, member states are parties to these instruments. Specific conventions and recommendations relating to women's rights exist. See, for example, uh, the Nightwork Women Convention, the Protocol to the Nightwork uh, Women uh, Convention, the Equal Remuneration Convention, the Maternity uh, Protection Convention, and so on, and so on. At the international humanitarian law, the Geneva Convention of 1949 and its protocols applicable in times of war, internal or international wars, are of course invocable by men, but also by women. And it is interesting to, uh, to note that uh, in a case law uh, rendered by the European Court of Human Rights in the case MC against Bulgaria for December 2003, um, perhaps, um, my former uh, professor, uh, Ineta Zimele, who is now uh, the judge elected uh, for, uh, in respect with uh, Latvia, 
she gave a speech uh, uh, before you uh, yesterday, yesterday morning, on the, um, uh, the presentation of the case law related to children and women issues. I'm sure she referred to that case, so I will be brief on it, but I cannot but, but, but mention it. In that case, uh, the applicant was age 14. She was, uh, which was the age of consent in Bulgarian law for sexual intercourse. She was raped by two men. She cried during and after being raped and was later taken to hospital by her mother, where it was found that her hymen was, had been torn. Because it could not be established that she had resisted or called for help, the perpetrators were not even prosecuted. And the court found a clear violation of Article 3, the prohibition of ill treatment, and 8, the right to respect for private life of the ECHR, noting in particular that the universal trend towards recognizing lack of consent as being the essential elements in determining rape and sexual abuse, with no reference at all, uh, with uh, coercion and any kind of force or threat to use force. So in this aspect, the court of Strasbourg referred expressly to another case law given by another international court. Uh, in particular to the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, Prosecutor versus Kunarac, Kovac, and Vukovic, dated 22 January 2001. And uh, by doing so, it is important in my view, uh, the court was nurtured by other international standards. So there is there and here a mutual influence to reinforce the protection of uh, women's rights. At the regional level, women's rights are also promoted, of course, and guaranteed by uh, uh, various uh, instruments. The organization of the American state, the OAS, uh, has adopted the Inter-American Convention on the Granting of Civil Rights to Women or uh, on the granting of political rights to women. And 20 years ago, it has been adopted the Inter-American Convention on the Prevention, Punishment, and Eradication of Violence Against Women, also known as the Convention of Belém do Para, adopted in 1994, and that uh, entered into force in 1995. Until the adoption of the Istanbul Convention, the Council of Europe Convention in 2011, on the same subject, the protection of uh, uh, violence against women, among, among which the uh, protection of domestic, against domestic violence. Uh, the Belém do Para Convention was the only international treaty in the world specifically addressing the issue of violence against women you will note that in some cases that inter-American convention has the status of the constitutional law, for example, in Brazil or in Argentina. That convention provides two types of mechanisms, of protection and of follow-up of the implementation of the convention, which operates through a multilateral evaluation round and a follow-up round. In Africa now, turning now to Africa, the African Charter on Human, Human and People, People's Rights, also known as the Banjul Charter, applies both to men and women. Following the recognition that women's rights were often marginalized in the context of human rights, a protocol to the Charter on Rights of Women in Africa, the Maputo protocol was opened to signature and ratification. However, uh, the protocol was adopted in July 2003, but is not, has not entered into force yet. It guarantees a comprehensive right 
to women, including the right to take part in the political process, to social and politically uh, equality with men, to control of their reproductive health, and uh, to put an end to female genital mutilation, which is still widespread in many countries in Africa. Turning now to the European level, which I know uh, uh, better for having uh, seen it, experienced it from the inside, uh, since I am a, a former agent for decades of the Council of Europe. And now uh, a legal practitioner, uh, uh, which is the equivalent of um, a barrister in the UK, an uh, avocat inscrit au, au barreau of uh, Strasbourg. Uh, the promotion and protection, and you probably heard about it uh, the, 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 the yesterday, the, of women's rights is on the top of the agenda of the Council of Europe, definitely. For the Council of Europe, in particular, equality in theory and in practice for men, for women, can only be achieved if all human rights are guaranteed to women in terms of law and practice. And I would like to focus uh, specifically on uh, uh, two issues, the freedom from all forms of violence, all forms of violence, and I insist on that word, all forms, and the education professional training and equal participation in all spheres of life. Violence against women is so widespread and systematic that it can be defined as pandemic. Freeing women from such a, treat a treatment, both in the public and the private uh, uh, sphere, is of course essential to their empowerment. In every country in the world, and there is no exception. Women from all classes and cultures experience sexual, physical, but also emotional, or I'd rather say uh, psychological violence. On 11 May 2011, the Council of Europe Convention on, on Prevention and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence was open for signatures. It is not yet uh, uh, in force today. Based on the three P's formula, prevention, protection, and prosecution, the convention is indeed the most comprehensive text in the world up to date on this subject. At present, uh, only 33 uh, Council of Europe member states have signed it. I checked again the website of the Council of Europe this very morning. And uh, uh, nine of them have ratified it. We need 10 ratifications to uh, put into motion and uh, uh, so that the convention may enter into force. The last country was uh, actually Spain who uh, ratified it. Uh, you will uh, also note that uh, uh, this convention is uh, a universal instrument since it is open not only to member states of the Council of Europe, but also to uh, 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 observatory, uh, observatory uh, member states of the Council of Europe, Canada, Japan, Mexico, Israel, uh, and USA. And none of them have even signed or ratified this uh, 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 instrument. Uh, all member states should be encouraged to ratify the convention as soon as uh, possible. This new treaty of the Council of Europe gives definitions of such notions as violence against women, of course, domestic violence, what it is, gender, gender-based violence against women, victim, and opens the path for creating a legal framework at pan-European level to protect women against all forms of violence and prevent, prosecute, and eliminate violence against women and domestic violence. In particular, I would like to mention uh, the Article 3b uh, uh, that provides a definition of what is domestic violence. 
that covers acts of physical, sexual, psychological, and economic violence, economic violence between members of the family or domestic unit, irrespective of biological or legal family ties. The convention sets out specific criminal offense of psychological violence, which is defined as uh, the intentional conduct which seriously impairs and damages a person's psychological integrity, which can be done by various means and methods. And also stalking, which is defined as intentional conduct of repeatedly engaging in threatening conduct directed at another person, causing her or him to fear for her of, or his safety. I am proud to be part of an international law firm that is uh, specialized in that matter the fight against not physical violence, which is actually easy to diagnose, but psychological violence, which is even more widespread than physical violence and is becoming an alarming issue in modern societies, in the West mostly. Uh, alarming issues because it is more perverse it is more difficult to diagnose it. It is more difficult to fight against it. Although, as you know, words can kill you. Words can kill uh, women in that uh, kind of situations. And above all of that, this kind of violence concerns all classes from all cultures and from all countries. Also, the Convention set up the right to compensation and, also, and uh, uh, set up, as set up, a group of experts on action against violence against women, the Grevio, uh, which is in charge of monitoring the implementation of the Convention by the state parties. I will not uh, mention again the case law of the European Court of Human Rights since uh, Ineta Zimele did it. But just a word to say that uh, the court has developed uh, uh, a sound case law on the issue and has adopted many judgments on the issue of women's rights, in particular domestic violence, ill treatment in detention, police violence, rape and sexual abuse, ill treatment in case of expulsions. Uh, education now. Education is a human right and an essential tool for achieving the goals of equality, development and peace. Non-discriminatory education benefits from both girls and boys and thus ultimately contributes to more uh, relationships between women and men. As uh, Nobel laureate uh, Nadine Gordimer has stated, illiteracy is poverty of the intellect. The education of women and children, especially girls, can create greater opportunities for women to lift themselves out of poverty and increase their social position. In spite of the fact that most development agencies identify women's literacy as the single, the single most important factor in development one in every three women in the world cannot read and write. Education is to be seen as having an impact on young women's health risk, but can also change women's life by reducing poverty, improving the health of women, delaying marriage, for example in Bangladesh or in Ethiopia, reducing female genital mutilation and increasing self-confidence and decision-making powers. Finally, and at last, I would like to finish this uh, presentation by uh, saying that uh, although uh, women in Europe uh, represent an increasingly high proportion of the labor market, they still remain uh, uh, significantly underrepresented in top management structures, including in economic and social decision-making uh, bodies, but also in the political sphere. And I think that equal presence of women in politics 
is of course essential and can only be achieved by way of legislation uh, introducing uh, quotas. Thank you.